And hello, everybody, and welcome to today's event. It's the fourth race of the Season 1 Gander Mountain Cup Series. We're here at Orlando International Speedway for today's Works Yard Tools 300. Orlando International Speedway is known as the backwards track. This lap, turning left, is not an option. It's a turn right oval. It's inverse of pretty much every other oval in the country. And we're just about a minute away here from getting the command to fire the engines. Kev Shearer. He is on pole for today's event. Alongside him is going to be Jacob Crago. As we'll look over here at the rest of the starting grid. Kang 3rd, McMillan 4th, Dutta 5th, Wakabayachi 6th, Wilson 7th, Appleman 8th, Steinmetz 9th, and Captain Marvelous 10th. You can look through and find your name here as I scroll through the list. We're about 30 seconds now from getting started in today's... 15 lap event here at this three mile oval, one of the largest ovals we've ever seen. It's not it's not a super speedway though. It's about stylized, sort of like a homestead, if you know what I mean. Anyways, we're in for some hard rock and action. Let's look at some notable drivers in the field. The 77 of Jackie Tang, current points leader, winner at Daytona, has yet to f finish outside of the top 10, make that top 9 as ninth last week at Road America's worst finish. That team is strong. Look for him to do well today. Um, the number 20 car of Yu Akbayachi has a win. There's Start command. Your engines. And that was the command, folks. They're going to get rolling underway. Some other drivers, Yu Akbayachi, our winner back at Phoenix. And last week's winner, Austin Wilson. And the 30 car starting at the rear of the field. This race is sponsored by his sponsor, which is weird. But he won last week at Road America. So back up to the front with Kev Shearer. He'll carry an onboard camera with us today. The Viva on board. Jacob Crago will carry our USO on board. Troy Kang, our GoDaddy.com on board. Junior McLean, our 90 Place Rocks on board. Eric Steinmetz, our American Yacht Club on board. Ian Dutta, our Clorox on board. Our Uvenor on board with Henrietta Fitzwater. And our Bondi, our Bondi on board with Captain Marvelous. We are, wow, we are four wide here, racing, I believe we are. Or maybe they're just trying to catch up to the front of the field. The pace car's still on track. But folks, we are indeed four wide here, back here. I didn't think we got the green yet, but apparently we have. Green flag in the air. We are underway here at Orlando International Speedway. There it is, green flag now in the air. Now we are underway here in the Works Yard Tools 300 at Orlando International Speedway. Jacob Craig got a good jump on the outside lane. Looks like he's going to inherit the lead early on. Looks like Troy Kang in that 34 is going to try and get up there, but Jacob Craig goes all on his lonesome. That 62 USO Dodge coming out of a single car team of Craig Mullen Racing. Craig getting the early lead. We saw this back at Phoenix. One driver just getting up there, nobody else challenging him. There's a few drivers. Troy Kang now, Ian Siegel looks like he wants to challenge for the lead here today. There's Taro Takanawa down at the bottom. Look at this. It is okay to go four wide at this track. That is something you don't see every day. And there goes Ian Siegel to the bottom. Looks like a lot of drivers just came down pit road. wonder what that was about. But anyways, he's now being fought off by Eric Steinmetz. Eric Steinmetz is currently holding second down, but Jacob Craig still has the lead. As he's going to get some drafting help from Troy Kang in the 34. He's now going to move up to see if he can work with Steinmetz. I do not know what the pit road situation was about. That was an odd thing. Junior McMillan in the 92 car. Looks like he's going to try the bottom lane, see if that works. And this inverted oval. And there are some more drivers going down pit lane. As Jacob Rigo holds the lead through lap number 2 of 15. No, none of these five cars that are stayed on track and not pitted are challenging Craigo at all. He is just running. Let's 
let's see, are these drivers going to pit coming up here? That looks like the word of the day is pit early for some reason. That is not a strategy I would have thought of. Eric Steinmetz going low. Maybe he's going to take a stop down pit road this lap. Eric Steinmetz now on the line. He's going to head down pit road. We now are down to four cars on track up ahead. The 62 of Jacob Crago, the 34 of Troy Kang, the 92 of Junior McMillan, and the 55 of Kev Shearer. There's Maximus Follett coming back on track. How very high speeds here at Orlando International Speedway, 205 miles an hour. Looks like there's a lot of traffic coming back on. Hopefully that's not going to cause a wreck. A lot of getting up the speed cars coming here as the 34 and the 62 are just going to pass on by them. Looks like the moves and the switching around in this track is going to be done on pit road. Let's see if the 62 and 34 and the 55 and 92 will come down this lap or not. If you can tell by our ticker over here, you have our top four. Then you have Eric Steinmetz, the leading group, who's at least nine seconds behind. Or at least one lap down, for that matter. And it seems the 92 car just head, headed down pit lane. There's the five car of Mattias Paiva. Looks like he's going to need some lap traffic for the 62 car. About to go two laps down. Looks like the 87 car of Kyle Anderson retired for some unknown reason. We'll get to that a little bit later. But for right now, it's all eyes on Jacob Crago and Troy Kang. The battle for the league. Kang has made a couple of tries. He has not been able to get down there just yet and make a move. Seems the 55 car is hanging out on its lonesome back there. None of the three have pitted yet. As we come to strike that time, that is now set five laps complete. We are on that lap six. Only four cars currently on the lead lap. And Craig is going to put two more cars a lap down in a second. And there goes Troy Kang to the inside. Is he going to make a move? No, he will not. He is riding the coattails of Jacob Craig this entire race. Let's see if either will make a move, if they try at all, that is. See so across the stripe that time. Twenty a point two four second lead over Kang and Kang's charging once again, but I don't think he's gonna be able to get it done just yet. It seems as if the fifty five might have just went down pit road, let me check. Nope, he is still running, just got a little bit of distance. That 92 car is on the other side of the track in some heavy traffic, but he is still on the lead lap. Everybody else, though, on track, all 34 other cars, I believe, 35, my bad, are all at least one lap down, and then you have the one retired car, the 87 of Kyle Anderson. Not much excitement out here today, folks. We really don't know what's been going on. We have a two-car battle out front. This is just like Road America, almost. And a little bit of Phoenix thrown in, but the two-car battle didn't take place until late in the race. Except Troy Kang isn't really wanting to make a move. Back at Phoenix, Ryan Wilson... I mean, not... At Road America, Ryan Wilson can stop moving over Austin Wilson as these two pass the lap, now lapped car once again of Luis Hernandez. And back at Phoenix, Jackie Tang... Tried and tried, but could not get around the 20 car of Yuyu Akabayashi. You could even consider this Daytona. Back when it was a three car battle between Tang, Hawkins, and Falks. But in the end, there is no battle going on here today. Troy Kang looks like he does not want to make a move. He's just saying, hey, let's just sit here in a second. Let's get, some good, let's get 38 points, try to work our way up in the points, and let's come back next week to Richmond and try to go for a good run. They're going to cross the stripe here this time. That is now eight laps complete of the 15. 
Maybe these guys are going with the late pit strategy, somewhere maybe around lap 10 or 11. Or they're going to try to run low on fuel before they pit. So they can hold their lead, or they might just try to stretch it and try to go all 15 laps on their fuel strategy. Whatever the case is, this is a very unique track for so many different reasons, and let's see if it holds its uniqueness. As these cars are now coming up on trying to relap the 89 of Donovan Updike. They may not have the speed to catch that car, and yes they do, they're going to head on under him. There goes Craig, and looks like Kang's going to get stuck right behind him. That's going to open up the gap between the 62 and the 34, and there comes the 34 right back on him. This would be the perfect time for the 34 to make a move. And he just needs a little bit more speed, and he can do it. I'm honestly shocked he hasn't. The 62 is once again one car dominating the entire race so far. So we are on lap 10 of 15 here today at Orlando International Speedway. Troy Kang not wanting to make a move on the 62. He is reluctant. He's, there he goes, down to the inside. Will the 34 make a move? Here he goes. Is he going to shuffle back in, right behind the 62? Yes, he will. Man. Talk about someone scared to make a move on a car like that 62. For those of you just joining us or flipping through the video here, that 89 car is in fact one lap down. There are only four cars on the lead lap. You have these two, the 62 of Jacob Craig and the 34 of Troy Kang. Back on the back stretch, you have the 92 of Junior McMillan, and then right next to him, the 55 of Kev Shearer. But back up to the front with Jacob Crago. That 34 car is falling back. Looks like the 89 might even be catching him. And the 89 is a lap down. The speeds these guys are reaching on this track is just insane. Unbelievable. Once again, we have one dominant race driver. This week, it's Jacob Crago in the 62 USO Dodge. No one even wants to challenge as Jacob Crago just passed two more cars. In fact, the 22 once again has no hood. That's unusual. Let's get a shot of the 22 real quick. Last week at Road America, the 22 got into a spin in an accident and went down pit road and got, hit, got her hood removed. That's Ray Tackett driving the 22 car. This week, the 22, back, and no hood. Huh. That is very strange, as that 22 car just got passed by the 5, the 79, the 99, and a lot more cars. 22 is slow, might be heading down pit road. Very, very off the pace. Very slow. Back up front. Two cars trying to get their lap back from Chico Prego. Donovan Updike just got one lap back. And it looks as if Ish Taylor is trying to get a lap back as well. Ish Taylor looks like she he just got the lap back as Troy Kang is still not making a move on the 62 for the lead. 13 laps in. This time by, it'll be two to go. Is there any chance we will see a new move as the 16 car about to get lapped? 34 might be looking for just an open hit down yet. At a track like this, at Orlando International Speedway, it should be simple to make a move. I, as well as everybody else watching this, is probably shocked to see nobody making a move. 14 to 15 laps in the books here. We're about to come by this time to the white flag. It looks as if Jacob Crago has pretty much wrapped up this race. Man, talk about the race dominance that we've seen this season. Except for Daytona, Yui Wakabayachi at Phoenix, Austin Wilson at Road America, and now Jacob Crago here at Road the International Speedway. Crago was not the pole sitter. That award went to Kev Shearer, which means Kev Shearer will be in the Sprint Unlimited next year, and looks like Jacob Craig is going to be heading into the All-Star Race next year, unless Troy Kang can make a move here. 
and it looks like he will not once again. Coming to the white flag, this time by Krago and Kang. Krago still has the advantage. Kang, if you want to make the move, now is the time to do it. Kang's not moving. That 3-4 car has been reluctant to move all race long. The 62 has been out front dominating. Lapped tons of cars. All but four cars finished on the lead lap. 62 did not go down pit lane. Neither did the 34. And this is what happened. Coming to the checkered flag. And here goes Kang to the inside. Oh my gosh. Kang to the inside. Now he's going to be stuck behind the 14. Kang's going. Kang might have just won this thing. Oh, but it's not going to be enough. Jacob Krago wins the Workstar Tools 300 at Orlando International Speedway. Once again, a close call at the end, but not close enough. Jacob Krago wins his first race, gives Dodge their first victory in the series. USO is definitely going to be happy with their run here today. Let's give you the official finishing results. Would you look at that, folks? Jacob Crago, Troy Kang, Junior McMillan, and Kev Shearer. Every other name on this list is one lap down, if not more. All right, let's give you the official finishing results as everybody's now crossing the stripe one by one. Jacob Crago, your winner. Congrats to him. Troy Kang, still a strong run today, as we saw at the end, but just didn't do the move at the right time. He'll take away second. Good points day for the 34 team. Junior McMillan, third. Kev Shearer, fourth. Ian Dutta, fifth. Anthony Ricky, sixth. The Cap and Marvelous, seventh. Jackie Tang, eighth. Taro Takanao, ninth. And Eric Steinmetz will finish tenth. Zachary Fitzwater, eleventh. Barry Baker, twelfth. Ryan Wilson, thirteenth. Joshua Michaels, fourteenth. Ish Taylor, fifteenth. Donovan Updike, sixteenth. Alex Tanker, 17th, Betty Johnson, 18th, Henrietta Fitzwater, 19th, and Cody Lamas, 20th, Mattias Paiva, 21st, James Qualls, 22nd, Austin Wilson, 23rd, Luis Hernandez, 24th, Topanga Wilson, 25, Kyle Keith making his debut today. We forgot to mention he replaced Harlan Sanders, who had just been fired by Scott Legacy Racing. He made his debut today, not too good, finished 26th, Eugene Max, 27th, Joshua Blackheart, 28th, Yui Wakabayachi, 29th, Ray Jones, 30th, Maximus Falk, 31st, Alex Hawkins, 32nd, Darian Taylor, 33rd, Amy Appleman, 34th, Ray Tackett, 35th, Calvincius Proximus, 36th, Ian Siegel, 37th, and 38th was um, Ryan Stevens. Now, where was in the 87 retired, and that would be the 87 finish in 39th place, that would be Kyle Anderson. Now let's go back and let's figure out what happened with the two drivers, the 9 and the 87. 87, let's get on track here. Hasn't been on track for a while, actually. Round lap 2, apparently, is when the issue happened. Oh, wow! I did not notice that. Let's watch from the 87's perspective. Eighty seven sitting very clean. As he decides, you know what, I'm gonna come down pit road. And he bumps the back of the eighteen. And a lot of drivers come down pit road. Looks like the eight and the eleven wrecked coming down. Wow. Eighty seven now right and there's another wreck over there. The three and the eighteen got into each other. Wow. The eight just bumped the eighteen. Everybody has damage. Let's figure out what the 87's problem was, as he now drives up to his pit stall. And is going to come in for a stop. And he just decided after that lap, you know what, I've had enough, I'm done. Now let's check out the number 9 of Robert Stevens. Robert Stewart is his name, actually. There's some technical errors, but he is technically named Robert Stewart. I've made that mistake the last three races. I apologize to him and that team. So let's fast forward a little bit. Let's see what his issue was. He had a header issue somewhere during the race. 
That put him out, and he's smoking coming down pit road. So now, let's get a report on what happened. Let's start it from right there. This is back on lap 6, folks. They just finished lap 6, and now they're on lap number 7. He's riding behind the 19, he's going to dive inside, trying to catch the 88 and 32. All these cars are a lap down at this point, now he's smoking. The 9 car is smoking, he's going to have to drive a long way, folks. Engine troubles ended the number 9 team's day. Unfortunate circumstances this whole season for that number 9 team. Low in the points, hasn't had the good runs they need. Robert Stewart, I apologize once again for the typo. He's just had some errors. And that team has really shown it. It's an underfunded single car team. And they just haven't gotten the runs they needed all season long. And that explains their day, folks. As he's going to come down pit road, and I assume that will be the end of his day. It's showing on the ticker right now. The 87 has not officially retired, but... We're all pretty confident he has, due to unfortunate circumstances. He's going to try to get back on track, looks like. There he comes, coming down pit road now. He's going to head into his number 9 Detroit Diesel pit stall. And there he is, and ladies and gentlemen, that will be the end of his day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to today's event. Jacob Crago, your winner here at Orlando International Speedway, will be coming back next week as we'll be heading to Richmond International Raceway. Be sure to join us then at, for the USO 250. I'm signing off here today. Thanks for watching. Like if you like the video. Comment to keep your eye. Right. Subscribe to get all of your Gander Mountain Cup Series action. Jackie Tang, I assume, is still the points leader, being another top 10 finish for him. And we'll see you guys around next week.